Hello, Coco. Haven't seen you for a while. What seems to be the problem? <sighs> oh, Zoe, I feel awful. I've been vomiting and feeling tired. Oh, it must be this weather. I haven't been using my litter box because it's painful when I try to go to the bathroom. And I, I think I'm losing weight. Oh, what would my mama say about me? Coco, that's terrible. I'm sure Dr. Garcia will be able to find out what's wrong. Hi, Coco. There's a good boy. What seems to be the problem? I'm worried about Coco. He's been vomiting, seems constipated, and has lost weight. I do hope you'll be all right. Let's just get a few details first. How old is Coco? He just turned 10 years old. Have you noticed any changes in his behavior? Well, he seems less active, not jumping around all the time like he used to. Hmm. Given his age, breed, and clinical signs, we should rule out some common senior feline diseases like kidney and thyroid disease. On his last chemistry test, his total calcium was high. He could have a less common condition called hypercalcemia, or elevated calcium. We'll need to run some laboratory tests to find the cause for his signs. The median age of presentation for feline hypercalcemia is 9.8 years, with long-haired cats being overrepresented. Symptoms may include decreases in activity and ability to jump, and weight loss, although some cats with large increases in calcium can show minimal or even no clinical signs. Dr. Garcia, what causes hypercalcemia? The most common form of hypercalcemia in cats is idiopathic, meaning we do not know the cause. However, it can also be associated with other diseases, such as chronic kidney disease or even cancer. But thankfully, hypercalcemia due to cancer is much less common in cats than in dogs. Using total calcium to monitor cats with chronic kidney disease may miss a hypercalcemia diagnosis. Elevation in total calcium occurs in nearly 10% of chronic kidney disease cases, but ionized calcium is elevated more commonly in about 30% of cats with chronic kidney disease. So, Dr. Garcia, what should we do? Let's run a chemistry panel and urinalysis, as well as a separate test for ionized calcium. We can perform those tests in the hospital while you wait, so we will have an answer right away. Harry, please collect blood from Coco and run the blood and urine tests we've just discussed. Don't worry, Coco. The test is simple and only requires a few drops of blood and some urine. They'll take good care of you. When an increase in total calcium is noted, ionized calcium measurement must be obtained. Many cats with normal total calcium and no symptoms are diagnosed with the discovery of high ionized calcium. Therefore, ionized calcium should be measured along with a biochemistry profile to help identify calcium disorders that would not be identified by measuring total calcium alone. Hypercalcemia based on ionized calcium can occur before increases in total serum calcium. Correction of serum total calcium using well-entrenched formulas that employ albumin and total protein is inaccurate in the estimation of ionized calcium and should not be used. When available, measure ionized calcium in the clinic with point-of-care analyzer. Samples should be sealed from air exposure and analyzed quickly to obtain accurate results. Exposure to air can falsely lower ionized calcium. Dr. Garcia, here are Coco's results. Thank you. Well, Coco does have an elevated ionized calcium level. All other lab test results were normal. We need to run some further tests to determine the cause of the hypercalcemia, such as parathyroid hormone and vitamin D blood levels, as well as x-rays and an ultrasound. Will he be okay? All of Coco's clinical signs can be caused by idiopathic hypercalcemia, However, we need to rule out the less common causes first. Lowering of ionized calcium with medication will help get his energy level back to normal. The cause we find will determine his treatment plan and quality of life. See, Coco? I knew that Dr. Garcia would know what to do. Thanks, Zoe. I'm in good hands with Dr. Garcia. <laughs>